Hello, welcome to The Last Standy, a board game podcast coming to you from four exciting countries across Europe. I'm into you from four exciting countries across Europe. I'm joined here today by the A-team. We have Alexis. From Belgium, hello. Alessio. A-team again, hello. Audrey. Hi, everyone. And I'm your host, Fen. Uh, today it is, of course, the 29th episode special switching up the format with a retrospective look back at the very best of the games which we have first experienced in 2021. We've picked a bunch of arbitrary categories and each of us will bring into the table the best game new to them in this year uh, and or possibly some honourable mentions as well. Still, before we get... Nothing much... Uh... <laughs> No, really, lately I haven't been playing much uh, board games. I've been crafting legendaries uh, in Guild Wars 2, but that's a video game, so I'm not going to talk much about that. And uh, for the board games part, we've been advancing slightly Midara with Alexis, and that's it. The last few days I've been with Alexis, and that's it. The last few days I've been mostly painting, which is not exactly our subject, so that's it for me. What about you, Alessio? <laughs> well, I am playing on board game arena, uh, like literally playing on board game arena, like right now. <laughs> I am arena, uh, like literally playing on board game arena, like right now. <laughs> I I am in a I am in a few games. Uh, it's cool. They they have brought in a lot of new games. Actually, all games, but uh, like you can play Agricola, you can play Llama for Rain Increase. Actually, all games, but uh, like you can play Agricola, you can play Lama from Renekris, from Renekmitia, also known as uh, uh, Tactical Uno. Uh, you can play Resarcana with expansion. There's uh, there's a lot of stuff at the Tubor Game Arena, so I am having a look around. Also, the, uh, I actually received my Mythic tier pledge of uh, Hero Quest. Uh, which is cool, which would be cool, but uh, I received that uh, in Nevada offices of my company because that all of this happened uh, before COVID. So uh, I, I will have a business trip for sure. And uh, well, uh, the world has gone another direction since then. So <laughs> I am waiting for my co-workers to send that, uh, that send the big package to me. Uh, just waiting for that. So that, that's my couple of weeks. My my previous mic broke a few weeks ago, so the, the last couple of episodes were uh, I probably a terrible sound on my end. But uh, now it's perfect. Pretty happy about it. Uh, other than that, this episode is going to come out one day before the Kickstarter ends, but I still want to plug uh, one of my favorite game of this uh, just published their new their newest Kickstarter that's updating the game into a new version and bringing up a, a fun boxed set with uh, with everything in it. Uh, it's called Mothership, and it's a game that's very inspired by Event Horizon, Aliens, Super Metroid, uh, Doom. It's kind of a, a sci-fi uh, by Event Horizon, Aliens, Super Metroid, uh, Doom. It's kind of a, a sci-fi uh, lightweight Ooh. RPG. I would very much recommend people to check it out. Uh, it's called Mothership, uh, and it's right now on Kickstarter. and. Uh, when this episode comes out, I think that the the campaign finishes then it's right now on Kickstarter. And uh, when this episode comes out, I think that the the campaign finishes the next day. So if you listen to it too late, uh, sorry, you missed it. We'll publish the link in the episode links of this episode on Patreon. Oh yeah, for so sure. You can uh, achieve that. Also, something that I think is, is really fun is that the, the game I think... Of, oh yeah, for so sure. You can uh, achieve that. Also, something that I think is, is really fun is that the, the game I think costs uh, 15, 20 euros, something like that. It's very cheap because it's uh, in Zion format. So it's uh, just like a few pages Ooh. of paper, which I like. Like if you want to buy it and have it shipped to you, it costs next to nothing. It's pretty great. I think that the box version that comes out with like uh, four different manuals, more around uh, 60 euro, something like that. Anyway, very nice, very cheap, just uh, brand new. You you had us at Super Metroid, <laughs> so yeah. <laughs> uh, anyway, that's, that's all for me. Uh, what about you, Fen? Oh, you know, I've just been doing things. And that's all. Okay. Yeah. Okay. No, let's no, go on. Nothing super interesting um, at all, really. Uh, apart from things I'm going to talk about in the list, uh, basically, when we we talk about various 
um, you know, categories. I think that's what I'll be talking about, what I've been doing there, because I've been reacquainting myself with a load of games for, like, is this one good enough to be on the list? Is it not? Is it Where is it going? So that's been my time. It's been very busy, um, especially with the, the not-so-legendary card pack landing as well. So uh, that's been a lot of work also. Um, Will we talk about this year? No. No, nope. we will wait. We will it, wait. It gets us onto a good conversation. Um, we'll see. But yeah, yeah, it's probably best to bundle up stuff uh, until it gets something worth uh, mentioning correctly and competently. Yeah, uh, for, for those people who do occasionally tune in to, to see if I have anything, anything further to say about this kind of stuff, or any of us do, my personal opinion is... <laughs> yeah, it could I, have been worse. I, I'm shrugging now. You know, not yeah. that that translates, but yeah. So um, that yes, yeah, just been busy, busy, busy with uh, with work. Yeah. Okay. So uh, the concept for this is it's a a look at a bunch of categories. Will t- are not necessarily released in 2021, but it has to be your first encounter, like within this year. Uh, the reason for that is um, I don't know about anyone else, but I'm. I'm very fatigued with the constant chase of the new and sitting down and playing Race for the Galaxy recently, which is like a 2007 game and sitting down and playing Race for the Galaxy recently, which is like a 2007 game. I was like, you know what? Sometimes there's some games that just get past being like they're timeless, you know, that you just come back to them. They're still great. And I was like, well, people should be encouraged just get past being like they're timeless you know that you just come back to them they're still great and i was like well people should be encouraged to go back and re-experience them because i i i'm looking at what we've got happening now and we're seeing like endless uh kickstarters of like uh, remakes people should be encouraged to go back and re-experience them because i i i'm looking at what we've got happening now and we're seeing like endless uh, kickstarters of like uh, remakes of games as well you know and like all the expansions jammed in and this constant um, feeding of come on you have to have it all you need it all this bit you, you'll order and i went i'm, I'm not going to back this i can't afford to right now and i put a pre-order in with my shop who picks up like the copies but usually they get kickstarter copies this time they didn't um and so i was left in a position where i wasn't getting any kickstarter stuff and you know what at that moment, like, I just felt relieved. I was like, oh, I've I seen mean, some stuff that people have played for the first time this year and be like, you know what, this design holds up even against modern design. This this is a bit close to why I uh, was very happy to talk about Abby and Takenoko in, the pre- in some previous episodes. I, I think that's a very good idea, especially since there's so many great games that people have not had a re-edition, I think, uh, two years ago. But it's I think that the base game comes uh, is pretty old. Uh, and I, I think it's always interesting to go to, uh, to those. And uh, with the current state of the world, uh, it's always a good idea, I think, to, um, <laughs> to, to remember, you know, maybe we can... Uh, Maybe we can still look at, look back at games that came out earlier. And keep supporting uh, the shops, but with the games they have. Yeah, that too. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, the other one is a rule we've got in. This is a rule I put in, and I'm going to explain my reasoning. I've said if a game appears, is a rule we've got in. This is a rule I put in, and I'm going to explain my reasoning. I've said if a game appears as your winner in a category, you don't put it in any other category. Uh, this is from my experiences of the Board Game Geek Game of the Year, where any year where Gloomhaven is out, you just write off four or five categories for the top like position and go and have a look at other what's, the, what's further down. And even then, there's a lot of noise where it's just the same game appearing again and again and i'm like well uh what uh, if you're giving game of the year to gloomhaven as i use as an example which is a very fine candidate why is it also winning campaign game solo game and like uh, two other categories i i have all i, I have only to say about this that uh, as long as wingspan uh, keeps uh, churning expansions uh, we want we will never get the uh, best podcast on board game geek <laughs> well, I, 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 I don't think we'll ever get best podcast on Board Game Geek. We might get best podcast, including the. I, I don't think we'll ever get best podcast on Board Game Geek. We might get best podcast, including Fen, 
as a category maybe or, <laughs> or you know uh, most diverse uh, range of country hosts from europe podcast yes 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 that that'd be a good one uh, most number of people with the letter a at the start of the, yes that that'd be a good one uh, most number of people with the letter a at the start of their first name <laughs> in a podcast this is a triple a podcast triple a uh yeah don't get, don't get me started on triple a <laughs> gonna shake my fist right um so we're just gonna kick this off we pick take my fist right um so we're just gonna kick this off we pick the order um alessio this first category was your nomination so you could talk to us about it okay uh first category is best game app so this is uh, the best application so digital or a full digital version of a board game uh Actually, it could be whatever which was the best experience as a board game app, okay? Uh, I'll start with my nomination for best of the year. For me, the best game app this year was Concordia, the game. Uh, um, let's say it's a full adaptation of the game Concordia. Uh, there is an expansion pass you could purchase for to get expansion later. They are not out at the moment of recording this podcast. And, uh, well, Concordia is an exceptional game, it's a great game to play all the time, and uh, it has uh, a problem, not a lot of people are wanting to play a two-hour card game with you, basically, <laughs> uh, at all times. Uh, what does this app for Concordia is to make the experience pleasant to everyone, there's no sit-up, there's no tear-down, the challengers online, you... You can, it basically made me rediscover this game uh, and because of that uh, that was absolutely my best experience uh, with a uh, board game app this time you can find it uh, on uh, steam you can find it on uh, and iphone uh, it has cross gameplay so it's actually recommended for everyone because for ten dollars or or so because the prices change uh, depending on the store you are buying from uh, for ten dollars or so you can get an exceptional top 10 game on board game geek actually it's the position the ranking on concordia but it's still pretty high uh, and it basically it has always been in the top 100 since it existed so um, real, really uh, my best recommendation I also have two honorable mentions, but I think I'll keep them for later in case I just, uh, have to talk about one of the two games I want to recommend. So what about, I don't know, uh, anyone else? Because I don't know. <laughs> well, well, before we do that, like I just would like to say Concordia goes on record as the best game we've not talked about properly on this podcast. <laughs> so, yeah. Not only, it's also a good implementation of a very good game. Uh, yeah, I, I have three boxes, all Concordia. Um, I have Salsa, Venus, and Concordia. So, and a, some bunch of other expansions. It's a very highly played game in this household. It was great. Yeah, and uh, actually, uh, across the globe, is actually a major improvement to the game. That that was the 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 reason I I decided to nominate this because there are a lot of strong competitors this year. Uh, this was the single app which made the best game experience, the, the best for me. Uh, uh, it is important also to say that Concordia has some fan-made solo variants, but there are not a lot of cool variants. So uh, be, being, being able to play against AI or other players anytime you want is a lot more than you could get for uh, no I, I won't give example because if you could uh, want to say that that up uh, later i will just chime in later well i can bring mine but it's slightly breaking our <laughs> our rules already because it's oh. yeah it, it took not your board game app uh, i'm going to talk about comcon uh, which is the companion app for an RPG. Uh, so Ooh. Lancer is one of my favorite uh, RPG of the, the past few years, just like Mothership. Uh, this one is a game about playing as massive mechs. Uh, and it, uh, and it, We talked about Lancer. It's very much inspired by um, 
XCOM, uh, I would say, because the game has a very strong bend on tactical, uh, on the tactical fight aspect. Uh, and so when you create your, your mech, you can slot in uh, on the tactical fight aspect. Uh, and so when you create your, your mech, you can slot in uh, a lot of different pieces that will give you different abilities on the battlefield. And keeping track of them all can be a little bit hard. Uh, when I play in, in person, I sometimes use um, a printed card. Of them all can be a little bit hard. Uh, when I play in, in person, I sometimes use um, a printed card to have, uh, to have all of those information. Or people need to, to keep a, a good track on them on their character sheet. But uh, the Lancer people are very aware of that. And what they made is a very strong custom app that allows you to build. But uh, the Lancer people are very aware of that. And what they made is a very strong custom app that allows you to build your, to build your mech, uh, keep all of your information in. And while you play the game uh, in person, you can have them on your phone or tablet. And uh, it allows you to keep track of your action point, of your whenever you need to roll uh, for your hull damage or whenever your character is overeating. It's incredibly strong, uh, both for the player and, um, and the game master. And that app also allows people to import their own uh, version of the game. So if you are playing with different stats or if you uh, file that you can download, it's so incredibly powerful and good and it works so well it's uh it blew me away uh comcon is definitely my favorite uh rpg app uh in the that i've ever seen and uh even though it's not a board game i think that it deserves you enter comcon app you get a full terminal to the right of the screen <laughs> yes that's cool <laughs> A freaking terminal. I, I I'll enter economy code now. I'll see what happens. All right. Fen, uh, do you have an app that you, you've really liked this year? Yeah. I first of all, and hold your, inter and hold your interjections until I finish talking, I have a dishonorable mention for an app I would like to talk about. This is the Eon's End app. Now, <laughs> e e Eon's End itself is fantastic, and the app is mostly great but the sound design was so vile that i had to turn it in app is mostly great but the sound design was so vile that i had to turn it entirely off all the way down <laughs> to nothing so i can actually enjoy the game because otherwise i cannot concentrate i cannot pay attention i cannot enjoy myself so the Eon's End app, a dishonorable mention because it's Eon's End app, a dishonorable mention because it's amazing with terrible sound design and sound does matter. Make your game sound like the Race for the Galaxy app, you know, fun, like pleasant noises, not horrible wet sounds and other things that were really like, no. Um, so dishonorable mention, it's just the sound design in the app. So there, uh, I'd like to give a quick honorable mention to Tailspire for I, I, it's not allowed on my list because it's an RPG app, but it allows you to build 3D environments and then play in them online uh, with your friends for role playing. Uh, you can import all of the dice and everything. It does stuff with this hold cities and like build your own buildings where you slot floors together. It's amazing. Um, I'd also like to give an honorable mention to the Awkward Guests app. We talked about Awkward Guests before but the app gives you random cases so it basically extends the life of the board game endlessly both for solo and multiplayer great to pop on for five minutes it's got that whole roguelike feeling where you level up your characters it's easy to understand and it doesn't take very long to do a run you can even have a random run and all of that stuff uh, we talked about one deck dungeon previously so i'm not gonna go and extol its virtues again um but the app is actually so good i have a suggestion for one deck dungeon app uh, it is uh, usually priced a bit more than uh, two or three euros or dollars but uh, at least once a year it has just passed this it happened in october uh, steam does uh, tabletop it has just passed this it happened in october uh, steam does uh, tabletop game sales and it, it always uh, goes away with full expansion at like 99 cents uh, each so get it when you can because uh, put it in on your wish list because it's actually so 
get it when you can because uh, put it in on your wish list because it's actually a very good app i, I agree with that okay all right um audrey do you have any or are we on to the next category I have barely played games with apps. I have played two games with apps in my entire life now. I have barely played games with apps. I have played two games with apps in my entire life now, which are Unlock and Destinies. And in my opinion, Unlock is not 2021, and Destinies would not deserve to go on a best list. <laughs> I, I, oh. I can agree with that. Okay, I, I have two honorable mentions we, which could become easily three then, before we move on to the next category. The first honorable mention is actually the Gloomhaven uh, game, and I was uh, really debating if that was worth an honorable mention. Then I thought that Gloomhaven is hell to set up. I think if that was worth an honorable mention. Then I thought that Gloomhaven is hell to set up and tear down. So whatever makes the experience clean is actually a very, very honorable mention. Gloomhaven in the end is a very much playable game. I like a lot more just Gloomhaven in the end is a very much playable game. I like a lot more Jaws of the Lion. I have high hopes for Frosthaven. But anyway, Gloomhaven is undoubtedly one of the best games uh, around by popular consensus. So uh, having a ch the, the, the chance of playing with a streamlined version, it's actually worth an honorable mention. You just can't get away from that game. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, it's going to be talked about. Well, Frosthaven will be talked about next year, of course. So yeah, you know, yes. Yeah, so there's no escaping from uh, it. But um, I, I, I think we can uh, agree that um, is a big gigantic thing, a monolith. Yeah, <laughs> Let, let's say generic. Yes, I have another honorable mention anyway. I actually thought about something. I have some app that I want to talk about. Go for yes, it. I just remembered. Okay. Yeah. Yes. You clearly prepared this. No, <laughs> no, it's the Tainted Grail uh, video game. It's not exactly linked to the board game as it's uh, a gameplay completely different. And... Um, the end of 2020 was the time when I discovered roguelites. I know I'm late, but uh, that was the time with uh, Hades. And Grail Game is a roguelite. So I was like, yeah, I'm going to try more. And I really like it because it expands a bit on the world that you encounter in the board game. But it's something completely different. And as a backer, I had it for free or included in my pledge. Um, and I really like the gameplay with cards in... Even though in feeling and I, you always have stuff to discover and unlock. And I think the official release was in spring. And they released an update with 100 passives and cards and stuff uh, at the end of October, if I'm not mistaken. And so they still keep uh, expanding. Uh... Yeah, uh, I have to also add to this that this is the... I am a baker and I got it for free, so this is the only content I got from Awaken Reels about Tainted Grail, and I didn't <laughs> beg for it. <laughs> I didn't beg it. <laughs> I have my card box. <laughs> Maybe I you should have ordered it. the... Uh... I didn't beg it. <laughs> I have my card box. <laughs> Maybe I you should have ordered the, uh, you know, the Italian version, so you could have been delayed as well. Get the yeah, proper not... experience. Yeah, I, I, yeah, the, the Italian version of the app, yes. <laughs> uh, anyway, <laughs> there's another uh, honorable mention, I guess. <laughs> Uh, anyway, <laughs> there's another uh, honorable mention I wanted really to have it go through, which is uh, Yellow Yangtze. Uh, we talked about it because basically that's the only way someone who could play with a new game about Yellow Yangtze because basically that's the only way someone who could play with a new game about Yellow Yangtze because for a distribution issue uh, the game is currently not available. And since uh, actually Yellow Yangtze is a masterpiece, it, it's uh, very it's great to have a chance to play the masterpiece. It, it's uh, very it's great to have a chance to play the game, even if you can get it in cardboard. So that's the reasoning why I thought to mention it as an honorable mention. 
Yeah, you're not the first person who said that applic uh, version is very good, and of course, one of the few ways to get it. Um, also, it's worth noting that Fen's personal opinion is that Yellow and Yangtze is better than Tigris and Euphrates. Don't at me, but if you want to, I'll fight you at Buck by the uh, by chance. <laughs> it, it, it has hexagons, so it's a good game. And I love I love hexagons. As a yeah. yeah. The next category, and this is a a bit of a fun, more fluffy one. We're looking at the games we've played this year with the best aesthetics or design. Um, so sometimes a game, maybe the mechanics are solid, uh, but it takes the like the design of it uh, just brings it all together don't want to play this or you can't get it on the table because you can go this is the best game i've ever owned and people look at it and go i hate beige and you just can't <laughs> get anyone to play with it so aesthetics matter and that's what we wanted to honor in this category um and ours as it was one where i put forward i'll go first I, as it was one where i put forward i'll go first i've got some honorable mentions i'm going to very quickly go through um the Eagle Griffin games, I'd like to say that Kanban, EV, Rococo and the Gallerist are all masterpieces in design. Um, the way they look, the way they feel, they take, well, in the case of Kanban and the Kanban and the Gallerist, quite complex systems and break it down in a way that's fairly straightforward to start following. Th that's Lacerda for you. Well, uh, yeah, but uh, it's, it's Ian O'Toole, I think, who is really the person who's managing to translate this stuff into such a masterful way. But Lacerda's games are, yeah, um, Lacerda's games are, yeah, um, they are monolithic. Um, the Gallerist is, I, in my opinion, if you want to play any of them and you haven't played any before, the Gallerist is the one you should try. Uh, but some people click more with Vinhas or um, Kanban EV. Um, although Kanban EV's got this mystical, like, possible um anyway i also wanted to give an honorable mention to innis um which is gorgeous but didn't come out this year uh and royal visit as well the new um uh the, the new like rani knitsia like done it's got a cloth mat and wooden pieces Ooh, it's yeah. gorgeous gorgeous yeah, yeah. it's it's whole it's a whole affair it's it's a real experience to play it's great but um the winner is one we talked about on this podcast previously, and it's a combination of gorgeous graphic design and really intelligent component packing and board game design all together. Uh, I think I know. Do you? Because it Park? uh, Parks got like knocked off for even the honorable mentions for me. I think I know which one we are going to mention. Is it Far Away? No. Far, ah! a, far Away is it has a lot of design problems, as much fun as it is. No, it's unsettled. Oh, ah. yeah, because mm. it's you've got this like box that you because mm. it's you've got this like box that you it, it's um, narrow, it's thin, so you can tuck it under one arm very easily. You can hold two planets inside the box so you can bring along to a session and go, we've got an easy planet to play here and we've got this planet to play here. And we're not playing the first planet with a fungus on it because I threw that in the fire. Um, but uh, it's with a fungus on it because I threw that in the fire. Um, but uh, it's it's like the way you unpack it, you lift the lid off and like each tray comes out with virtually all of its components already on them and it's such a fast breeze to set up uh, it, it, and it, the artwork is gorgeous the, the, they only have five miniatures but they are very are very distinct they're large um the luna i think it's luna the, the robot is super cute so that's like my and it, i got it this year and for the problems I had with getting to grips with it initially, which is all in the hands of the first planet, uh, it's it was still beautiful. It still feels like you're exploring some you're exploring some weird, mysterious place. Um, and a game trays knocked it out of the park with the, all of the work they did on getting everything to fit in. So as I don't sleeve the cards, I didn't have that problem, and uh, I, and that's my winner for aesthetics. Um. That's a very good. That's a very good uh, recommendation because Unsettled definitely the the Kickstarter definitely um, went above and beyond with the the beautiful looks that it has, and that's definitely what uh, what got me interested in the first place. Um, on my own end, I wanted to give an honorable mention to Far Away because I interested in the first place. Um, on my own end, I wanted to give an honorable mention to Far Away because I think that the the look of the tile and the simplicity in the uh in its visual because this is aesthetic uh 
focused, I think that it, it deserves an honorable mention. Uh, I also wanted to to push an honorable mention. Uh, I also wanted to to push um, Dice Forge. I I'm a sucker for any kind of indented uh, board. I love it when you can slot cards into cardboard. I, I don't know what, why, but it just stimulates a part of my brain that makes piles on your die and build them. Uh, I think that it just it just looks gorgeous and feels really uh, nice and sturdy when you play with it. Uh, and I can mention it because I got the expansion on the this year, so. <laughs> um, but my, my real... Uh, Nomination. Every card is in, uh, indented. Um, the the tile look uh, so beautiful. You want to put them in your mouth. It's just such a nice, uh, tightly little designed game that just feels nice. Whenever you you shake the the bag with all of the, the little tetramino pieces, uh, the game that that just looks and sounds beautiful. You can't go wrong with the terminos. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. The um designing stuff to have dual layer cards and, and in recessions in your recesses not recessions nobody wants recessions recesses in your um, player boards is just such a great thing to have in your um, player boards is just such a great thing to have um uh, not that i would nominate it or anything but um terraforming mars oh yeah i got the plastic double layer like i wish it wasn't plastic but that actually made the game so much easier to play because you didn't like Breathe too heavily and mess up. Breathe too heavily and mess up where you were on all of your stuff. So yeah, I, I'm actually going to do a slight uh, dishonorable mention uh, for a game that I absolutely love, um, which is Dungeon Degenerates. Uh, the character boards that you use are not indented, and unfortunately, you need uh, the character boards that you use are not indented, and unfortunately, you need to keep track of your stats by by moving uh, cubes on them. And it's incredibly easy to have your cu cubes flying around, and you're completely losing track of how many uh, resources you're supposed to have. Uh, that's self uh, little dials just to keep track of the um, of the numbers rather than uh, moving stuff on the the cardboard thing. I mean, it's an indie game, so they couldn't really. Uh, I, I can understand that it's hard to, to build properly indented and beautiful and probably expensive uh, little cardboard thing, but uh, I think that's in there. Uh, what about you, Audrey? What's your uh, best aesthetic this year? Yeah, my, my best aesthetic game is not a 2021 game, but I discovered it in 2021, so yeah, and it's not a very old game. It's Everdell. Good choice. Scrolls. I will, I will put a tiny dizzle that are on the tree to see them. Have you tried to play Yggdrasil Chronicles? That's a tree where you can't get cards. <laughs> and storing the tree is a problem then. But uh, all the rest besides the tree is perfect. All the little resources all have their different textures. Ford is uh, wonderful and uh, what I love most of all is looking at all the cards and trying to find, uh, let's say, clues or uh, tiny bits of art where you see the, the Miss Mouse and Mr. Mouse and how they fit together and stuff like that and uh, to find interesting things in the art. And wooden critter meeples. Yes. They're so great. It's it's really exceptional when you get a game with uh, so with the, with the artwork so much consistent within cars, within creatures, within with the, with the artwork so much consistent within cars, within creatures, within stuff. Yeah, they've really put together quite an engaging world and experience with all of that. Um, that is, I. I ended up just backing the whole thing when they did the this is our last Kickstarter whole thing when they did the this is our last Kickstarter for Everdell and we're having everything and I went all right you know what you got me I'll take everything um, even if it means I'm gonna have to find a home for my current copy and all its expansions uh, yeah it's it's beautiful I, I would I think I would like watch a, a show um, with these a show um, with these creatures or read books <laughs> about these little creatures doing these things but you know uh, I do love red wall yes it, it's exactly like red uh, red wall or moss guard 
And <laughs> as we are speaking about nice critters, I want to uh, signal that right now I am petting one because I got about nice critters. I want to uh, signal that right now I am petting one because I got asked for pets. <laughs> I, I'm just being stared at by one. She's occupying the bed underneath my desk, and she's not very That's happy. Enough? It's been raining no, a lot. No. She's not very That's happy. Enough? It's been raining no, a lot. No. You want to change sides? Oh, you want to change sides? Okay, so she's not talking to us. No, no, no. Uh, she, she's talking <laughs> to the, the fluffiest little man on the podcast. We, we should yeah. just go ahead, I guess. And so uh, to finish off with the aesthetics part, out. Of course, I have a game. Ah. You want to. <laughs> yeah. I uh, knew it. Yeah, uh, the game is Oth Chronicles of Empire and Exile. Uh, what can I say? Oth is a big campaign game for people uh, reading me on BGG. It's not a legacy game. I'm sorry, guys. The podcast is not a legacy game. Oth is not legacy. Unless you will fight you out back by the bike sheds. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, uh, anyway, uh, what what can I say about the aesthetics? Uh, it's colorful. It's great. It's illustrated by Cal Ferrin, which is uh, actually guaranteed to make uh, something uh, horrible and grievous like uh, like war, like carnage and bloodshed. He, he kind of he can make make makes everything uh, lighthearted. So yeah. actually, the, the aesthetics are what uh, really deliver the game to you. You yep, have yep. cards. It, it, yeah. He he even manages to make the horrors of being a child look cute with Ford. Yeah, exactly. And uh, the the beautiful thing about that is basically that the narration is left to you. You have very vague cards. You have a small favor. You have a slate of end like cards and advisors you can play and denizens. And yes, you can build a narrative out of that. But when you see visual cues which are so evocative, it's uh, actually a pleasure to create your chronicle. Uh, couple that with the uh, tactile experience of the deluxe version you got from Kickstarter. So you have metal favor coins, which are great. Also because uh, they uh, reinforce the, 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 the meaning that the favor is your currency there because they are coins, they are basically money. And uh, everything, the, the Chronicle book in uh, Fox Leather, I, I, I hope it's fake leather at least, <laughs> but it for sure it is. Uh, oh no no I... no no no! That's the previous chronicler's skin. The, the, the previous yeah, book. exactly. <laughs> he, he, before this game starts, at least in my head canon, the previous one was peeled for the terrible crimes you committed um, uh, while failing to get your new page. Which, by the way, means it's one hundred percent organic. So that's uh, a win-win. Are we sure <laughs> all of those creatures in the game are completely organic? <laughs> anyway, the, the, the game is uh, is an exceptional eye candy. I, I love everything about it, and it also a smart insert. You can uh, add a few stuff. The game is self-contained. It stays uh, within the lid, and uh, it never lifts the lid. You H can hang store on. it vertically. How have you done that? <laughs> my copy does not do that at all i can okay. gush on about the artwork but it does like the cards are wild they do not fit properly into the well and as a consequence um the box has had to have a heavier box put on top of it so I, i'll answer that. you the best way i can uh, which is uh, uh, go on patreon forward slash the last and the and uh, subscribe to the five dollar uh, subscription <laughs> and then you'll find in the archive an unboxing video of Oth where I unbox everything and I put everything in their place inside the box so okay. if you are curious just go there there you go if you want to have lessons about how to put stuff into boxes Alessio can provide video lessons I, I'll brutalize everything, but I'll make it fit in the box. Well, well I, I think if you want lessons about how to get a cat into a box, you'd have to talk to someone <laughs> else, but still, yeah. Yes! You have a picture on the Discord! <laughs> yes, uh, yes. <laughs> yeah, and I also have an honorable mention. <laughs> yeah, and I also have an honorable mention, but since it's my winner entry for miniature game, I just talk about it later. 
Okay, well, Ooh, in which case, you can... You Speaking just, of miniature games. Yeah, exactly. Speaking of miniature games, here we go. Go ahead, yeah. Audrey. For miniature game, I just uh, talk about it later. Okay, well, Ooh, uh, in which stereos. case, you can... You Speaking just, of miniature games. Yeah, exactly. Speaking of miniature games, here we go. Go ahead, yeah. Audrey. Yeah, uh, for miniature games for 2021, I have just one I want to talk about. I've already mentioned the game. You can, you, Speaking of just, miniature games. Yeah, exactly. Speaking of miniature games, here we go. Go ahead, yeah. Audrey. Yeah, uh, for miniature games for 2021, I have just one I want to talk about. I've already mentioned the game uh, once in the podcast, and I will have to make a full uh, speech about it, and it's Marvel Crisis Protocol. Just one I want to talk about. I've already mentioned the game uh, once in the podcast, and I will have to make a full uh, speech about it, and it's Marvel Crisis Protocol. Why is it a 2021 game for me, uh, despite collecting it since the end of... 2019, I think, because two reasons that I had, uh, the batches actually I ha I got in 2021, honestly, the miniatures are gorgeous. And if you put any miniature of the core box next to a miniature that was released uh, during 2021, honestly, the new ones shine so much. And together in a box, and there is a new Iron Man, which is in the Hulk Buster box. And the, get, the rules are the same for these, but when you put the two miniatures together, you can really see how much um, progression was made in two years. And I think that's really impressive, and that it needs to be a, a diorama. And so players can just stick with their core box and play and be happy and they have all the rules while uh, miniatures pa while miniature painters which have the core box will now be crying over the new sculpts. Uh, some of the of the expansion stuff now be crying over the new sculpts. Uh, some of the of the expansion stuff for Crisis Protocol for 2021 is this the year when they released the Scarlet Witch and Quicksilver? Yes. And are These they were cool? Spring sp and are they cool for 2021? Is this the year when they released the Scarlet Witch and Quicksilver? Yes. And are These they were cool? Spring sp and are they cool? Yeah, the, the Scarlet Witch, uh, uh, also I think in the uh, beginning of the year there were the X-Men with a storm. And These are they cool? Spring, sp and? Are they cool? Yeah, the, the Scarlet Witch, uh, uh, also I think in the uh, beginning of the year there were the X-Men with a storm. And Storm and Scarlet Witch both have the same kind of support, where they are both uh, suspended in air. Support, where they are both uh, suspended in air. Storm, which is connected to the base by a uh, lightning bolt. And uh, Scarlet Witch, which is suspended with red magic. And... By red stuff. Yeah, and... If you start to stretch them, they will uh, pop back into place and do a twing. <laughs> pop back into place and do a twing. <laughs> uh, and uh, yeah, so these are just uh, the um, the pegs in the miniatures to assemble them onto the supports are really well done. Uh, you can barely see a seam, etc., which which is where the quality is awesome. Uh, I admire cable. As, as well, yeah, yeah, Cable is a great miniature, but uh, back to Scarlet Witch and uh, Storm, but yeah, you think that these are fragile minis, and I, I would be a bit afraid to take them to, to a game, honestly, uh, except, of course, if you have everyone at uh, Cable. I think the character was invented by Rob Liefeld, so I guess he, he did at least one good thing uh, with comics. <laughs> <laughs> And also, 2020, and also 2021 was the year of the release of Deadpool with Bob, Agent of Hydra, which is one of the most hilarious bugs. That's a treat. Yeah. <laughs> oh, okay, I, I have uh, uh, a winner too. Uh, Naysayers uh, will probably say it's more a dungeon crawler than a uh, miniature focus game, but I have to say that's lege the Descent Legends of the Dark. And uh, they are, uh, like Audrey said with the Crisis Protocol, they are a big, big, big improvement uh, over first and second edition of Descent. And uh, 
especially uh, this entire game is stunning when you look at it with painted miniatures uh, which goes up one or two levels uh, with staircases and uh, f furniture and stuff you you uh, simply the, the simply put the game wouldn't be the same if you had tokens or standees it's a beautiful game it's a great game it's a recommendation absolutely and tokens or standees it's a beautiful game it's a great game it's a recommendation absolutely and uh, it's my miniature game for uh, 2021 uh, it's on my christmas list yeah <laughs> it yeah. deserves uh, to be in your christmas list because uh, visually it's stunning and list yeah <laughs> it yeah. deserves uh, to be in your christmas list because uh, visually it's stunning and it was my uh, best aesthetics uh, honorable mention actually uh, it uh, makes a great use of uh, of the app actually uh, e e uh, if you follow the forums and uh, the app actually uh, if you follow the forums and the communities you can see that the app starts falling down a bit because side quests are not fleshed out as the main story there is something sometimes some bug in some configuration but the the, the app experience and how the app is tailored around the game is simply excellent i think this will be the the the, the comparison for all future app app integrated games mm, maybe you should have mentioned it in the app section as opposed to the miniature yeah, section yeah yeah mm -hmm. but it was uh, uh, being, uh, uh, starting to be a, a crowded talk. section so no, we're, we're gonna so it's that uh, it's fine if it's crowded just honorable mention the app but um, yeah. i do want to chime in and just say these miniatures in descent are by far and away the best miniatures i've seen in any board game so it deserves to be in the miniature category. <laughs> Absolutely. These, to think that they've gone from, I have them over here, actually. I've got, like, uh, all of the PVC uh, Legends, um, Road to Legend 1st Edition slash 2nd Edition models, and to consider they went from those PVC uh, things with weak detail and small scale and small scale to these is incredible because they've just stepped up and gone hey we can do what games workshop is going to do um and done it incredibly competently whoever they got on board for the sculpting and for setting all of this up and the tooling and everything just knocked it out of the park my only complaint is that one model that comes in three pieces out of the park my only complaint is that one model that comes in three pieces has to be stored in three pieces unless you're going to throw the that bit of the insert out which is a bit huh but yeah that's yeah. not a problem with the model the model's gorgeous I, I i i really want to do the old characters from descent first and second edition who do appear in the store Descent first and second edition who do appear in the story a bit some of them i want them to do those in this style because it's it's brilliant yeah i also have no complaints with our style which has been discussed a lot but i i just like it it I have to say, uh, I I was an avid player of the first edition. I have to say, uh, I I was an avid player of the first edition. I skipped completely the second edition. So I, uh, when you talk about uh, second edition, I basically don't know what you're talking talking about. Oh, you you but... missed out on a real journey. You did. Yeah. Uh, the, uh, <laughs> the the initial plays of second edition were horrible because everything was journey. You did. Yeah. Uh, the, uh, <laughs> the 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 initial plays of second edition were horrible because everything was just a race it's not a dungeon crawl anymore it's an objective race but then they released the road to legend app uh, which is still on steam um and it is it, it is what uh, legends of the, it is what uh, legends of the dark turned into the experience of journeys in, of yeah road to legend um on journeys in the dark in descent second edition is the previous version of legends of the dark god they these names descent i don't want to call it descent three because they said it's not descent three which descended from the second edition descent road to legend there we are got there yeah actually <laughs> to, to, to me to me uh descent legends is what made the descent come back so uh, really um it, it deserves to win something this year and that's my best miniature game Use, uh, but interesting 
to note that uh, so the miniatures are high impact uh, polystyrene, which is, as Sven noted, the same uh, plastic as Games Workshop uses, and also Marvel Crisis Protocol. And gen discovered general it yesterday. <laughs> yeah, and gen generally, uh, when game uh, putting them together with generally plastic glue or super glue, depending on what you like, uh, letting them dry, and then you can play. And here they took the option to have it fully assembled uh, from the factory. And I think that's tr tr as, um, um, a choice that is very in both crowds. And I think that they're decentrally... Um, has it almost for both perfectly. Yeah, they definitely went the extra mile to ensure that the game was accessible to people who don't assemble miniatures, uh, non-hobbyists. And... That, that's that's it. And until you try, until you try to paint the white. Um. Yeah. <laughs> I don't. I don't paint white. I. I don't paint white. I have no idea what you're talking about. <laughs> yeah. Oh, white, not white. I was thinking, like, is there a white in the game, as in W I G? Yeah, H that one. G? There are there are four of them. Mm, yeah. They, they are, G there are. Yeah, H that one. G there are there are four of them. Mm, yeah. They, they are the the undeads with the shield and the arrows planted on the shield. Uh, on my end, the the one that I'd like to nominate for the miniatures. There's not many of them that I I could think of because I'm not a miniature painter specifically. But I think of because I'm not a miniature painter specifically. But I think that Tsukuyumi deserves uh, at least my recommendation because while the miniatures are not, uh, you know, uh, hard plastic, beautiful, extremely detailed, they have the weirdest and most fun uh, body type with their, their use of different uh, characters and, fish, uh, and factions. And I don't think that we see that enough. Uh, usually we'll have just... Uh, very similar style for every faction in one game, but in Tsukuyumi, just, you just have uh, so many different uh, types to choose from. So I think that they deserve a recommendation. In Tsukuyumi is because of those miniatures. I was like, I'm never going to paint these, but I still really like how they look on the board. Uh, and for the record, the reason I wouldn't paint them is I, I, I'm like too far behind on painting at this point now i'm asking for to to reincarnate as myself a few times so i can get everything done <laughs> i'm gonna leave this king never finished then yeah yeah perfect <laughs> unfortunately that's not how life is and you often have to do things with the hands that you have been dealt speaking of the next category is specifically about the cards that you're being specifically about the cards that you're being dealt because the next category is about card games uh, every game that's primarily about cards not games that have cards in them but games that were the main mechanics functions with cards uh, and i think that we're going to start with fence this is a category fence this is a category of game I play a lot. I play a lot of card games. I, I always have done. So I got a bunch of honorable mentions and I've got two winners in tied places. So I'm gonna be very quick through the honorable mentions. Hostage Negotiator, which would have been a solo would have been a solo game winner. I've talked about it on the podcast previously. Slot it to one side. Fantasy Realms, which everyone's been raving about for good reason, and if you don't have it and it's available in your local stockist, you should just get it because it's very easy to fit games in and it's great fun and the expansion's wonderful as well. Oomph. Regicide, best thing Regicide, best thing you can do with a normal pack of uh, of cards, short of playing. That's five my honorable poker. mention too. Yep. The crew, uh Deep Sea, which was new to me this year. The the crew I think I played last year. Um Deep Sea improves on everything. Uh, on, on the missions, yeah. On everything. Uh, on, on the missions, yeah. <laughs> unmatched uh, for that two-player, mostly card-driven combat with a bit of moving miniatures around. Really sweet. Deadpool's coming out soon. Super exciting. Um, and the trading card game Flesh and Blood, which I'm going to talk about, and Blood, which I'm going to talk about for a little bit here because if you've not heard of this game 
it's come out uh, relatively recently, I think maybe last year, I can't remember exactly. And it's a company who they are pushing to have their game played not never electronically but physically physically flesh and blood style and it's a game where you play two characters uh a fight fencing off against each other in a, a duel maybe a magical duel or swords or, or sword versus magic and so on um you can get these things they call blitz decks which is a shortened version of the game you can buy two of those and you can play it for i think for i think less than 30 euros uh, and you don't ever have to touch the trading card aspect it is worth mentioning um this game has gone crazy on the finance front if it remains uh big it's probably going to be a really good investment but i'm not here to give you financial advice because because I certainly didn't make a good investment when all my lion's eye diamonds got <laughs> stolen and I didn't have them insured. So there we are. That's my honourable mentions. Now my winners. One of them is from a designer we've had on this podcast twice before. Talked about, not not spoke to. I'd love to speak to him, but uh, we've talked about him. The cre- Not spoke to. I'd love to speak to him, but uh, we've talked about him. The creator of Forgotten Waters and Dead of Winter, Isaac Vega, with his card game Ashes, Rise of the Phoenix Born. And I'm pointing up at it because it's on the shelf oh. next to me. This is a game where you generate your resources through a dice pool and then you play semi customizable semi customizable decks or you can play with the pre con decks they recommend. Uh, it is about a bunch of like people called Phoenix Born in this very loose fantasy world. Apparently Isaac has a good vision of what everything is but hasn't put it together in any package yet. So you get little glimpses. It's smooth, it's beautiful it's the same artist as beautiful it's the same artist as the the one who did dead of winter she's amazing i'm blanking on her name right now i keep trying to remember it i'm not going to google it someone can tell me one day um, but she's one of my favorite artists who i never remember the name of that's a not really a good um like <laughs> not really a, a, a huge rec- huge like clamoring is it she's the famous favorite my favorite person i can't remember and that is that is tied with a game which I have returned to, but in a format which I've never played before this year. And so my other card game of the year is going to Magic the Gathering Elder Dragon Highlander slash Commander slash. So that card determine the colours of the cards that are allowed in your hundred card deck. All cards have to be singleton unique, so you can't have any duplicates except for basic lands. And you play with 40 life, there's a bunch of other rules, and you just sit down and relax and play according to the contract that the people are there for. So play super competitive uh, to, to win as quickly as possible. It's it, it's the most popular format in Magic. Uh, my experience to it has been this year, and it has been amazing. It's been so much fun. Um, but it, it, I prefer Conquest because that's a more accessible, cheap format because Rise of the Phoenix Born. Oh, I was expecting you to mention uh, to pick Chris of the Galaxy. I was, I mean, you've known it for years, so I can't, I, I, I can't, I, I, I could if we sat down and played the Aliens um, expansions because I've not had a chance to play those, but I'm missing the first one of that series, so we can't play with, but I'm missing the first one of that series, so we can't play with that alien artifacts is missing so yeah oh, on my end i wanted to give an honorable mention to uh, iron's hands because obviously it's pretty amazing it's uh it's a really fun uh, boss battler card game uh i think that it does a lot of things for card game uh i think that it does a lot of things right i just need to play more of it to to properly recommend it um i i think that hostage negotiator uh that i've I hadn't played the legacy version until this year and I started it and it's really, really fun as a solo game. It's pretty, uh, pretty amazing. Really, really fun as a solo game. It's pretty, uh, pretty amazing. Um, but my pick for this year is uh, Unmatched because I hadn't gone deep into it up until now. And I think that the difference, uh, the way that it, every, um, every character is extremely asymmetrical. Every um, every character is extremely asymmetrical and they all play very differently and it still feels somewhat uh, balanced is really interesting. I think that it's always fun to to mix and match extremely different uh, ways of fighting and to have to uh, adapt and match extremely different uh, ways of fighting and to have to 
uh, adapt your play to the adversary that you're you're fighting. I think it's pretty great, uh, and every expansion of Unmatched has been very fun to play. Uh, yeah, that's me. I have a surprise entry. And Is it uh, very fun to play? Uh, yeah, that's me. I have a surprise entry. And Is it uh, Wingspan? We know it's Wingspan. <laughs> no. <laughs> no, it's best podcast. Uh, it's actually, always Wingspan. I, actually, it is a, a surprise to me too, uh, and that is a testament to how good it is. Uh, basically, I have uh, two great games I love and play continuously. I was playing one of them right now, uh, which are great because of some expansions, so I will probably talk about them later, and they have uh, they went down uh, from winners to honorable mention. Our game is Rift Forts, which is basically a game I managed to play like two weeks ago for the first time. I got it. It's from an Italian designer, so I got it recommended from friends. It's from <laughs> uh, uh, one more time games. I think the original Kickstarter, anyway, an Austrian company worldwide. It is uh, so good. It is basically uh, a game when you draft for um, w the game is basically shot and tot and meets you know, <laughs> which is uh, uh, so so cool. Uh, you basically have uh, you place a line of elementals. You can draft five schools, uh, uh, four schools of elemental uh, among uh, ten possible. And the draft is kind of randomized because before drafting you remove two schools which are unavailable for the thing. You remove two schools which are unavailable for the for the game. And then you have three actions to play and you play basically horizontally. So you try to cover and control each of the of those rifts by playing elementals. Uh, you play cover and control each of the of those rifts by playing elementals. Uh, you play elementals like if it were a trick-taking game because the elementals are all the same and they have power depending on the element they are representing. Uh, they are very simple and cool powers like they are representing. Uh, they are very simple and cool powers like they do splash damage uh, on one row and uh, two rows adjacent to them or they can uh, do damage in depth to the same row or they can give you bonus points, great powers which combine and they counter each other and then you have to draft and counter draft uh, the action economy is tight, like if it were shot and totten or battle line, uh, for for instance. It is. Uh, um, I I can talk a lot about this, and I I, I received the package. I told, uh, hey, since we are making a break, why don't we try rift force? And we ended up playing that until the end of the afternoon. We played three hours straight. Uh, it's a game which has so much depth with simple rules. It plays horizontal so much that uh, I actually prefer it over the other two that I will mention in the next category. So, what are you doing? Go buy it. <laughs> I think I'm the one left uh, to speak on the <laughs> card game category. And uh, my favorite is the exact same as Fen, uh, Magic the Gathering, but for different reasons. The one left uh, to speak on the <laughs> card game category. And uh, my favorite is the exact same as Fen, uh, Magic the Gathering, but for different reasons. Aha. Uh, I played Magic the Gathering in 2006, 7, maybe just a bit of 2008, and then I dropped it because it was impossible to find, but for different reasons. Aha. Uh, I played Magic the Gathering in 2006. Six, seven, maybe just a bit of 2008, and then I dropped it because it was impossible to follow wives during university. And I got back to it this summer during the Forgotten Realm set. And just as then I discovered it was impossible to follow wives during university. And I got back to it this summer during the Forgotten Realm set. And just as then I discovered uh, the commander format. And I think it's really great uh, as a as a format. And with my boyfriend, we can really play chill uh, with a uh, with a format and just try decks. 
And uh, why the Forgotten Realms? Because we are both uh, D&D players and uh, game masters, and that set, yeah, was uh, targeted towards us. And so we got uh, all the commander decks. For and if you are a D&D player, yes, this set is definitely for you. All the illustrations will re remind you something from D&D. And I wanted to speak about one series of cards in particular, which has the you do something, you enter a dungeon, you fall into a trap, you get names, but it's all like you do something. And the illustration of these cards all feature uh, a party of adventurers, there are four, and it's always the same for uh, adventurers. And so you can see them in different situations, and I think these cards are very uh, fun to look at, depending on the results. And it cannot be replaced by flipping a coin because it's never from 1 to 10 do this, from 11 to 20 do that. It's always uh, like something like from 1 to 8, then to, from 8 to 15, and then from 16 to, to 20. And so you can't replace it by flipping a card. So you have to use the identity of D&D, I should say. So yeah, all it in all, it's... Become. It's a pretty fun uh, set, in my opinion, and I want, and I will be able to stay inside that set and not want to buy more, uh, which is the danger with Magic the Gathering. And I will finish my list with, but most awaited uh, mentions, which are Eon Zen Legacy, the French version, <laughs> is being pushed back uh, over and over again in stores. So I want it, but I'm waiting. I know and... how it feels. <laughs> yeah. Uh, we've attained it great, but I do the same. <laughs> and uh, in a few weeks, I should get uh, my pledge for It's a Wonderful Kingdom, which is the two player sequel. It's not, not exactly sequel, but uh, in the same basic mechanics as It's a Wonderful World. And I'm really waiting for it because the, for it because the, I I really enjoy the draft mechanics from It's a Wonderful World, but they're having it more tailored towards two players will be really fun. Even though there are a few bluff mechanics that I'm not good with, uh, I think that will be fun. So these are my two most awaited games for the end of the year, unless Ian Z be fun. So these are my two most awaited games for the end of the year. Unless Ion Zen gets patched to 2022. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that, that wraps up the best card game category, I guess. Uh, anything else to add about this? Category, I guess. Uh, anything else to add about this? Okay, let's move on then. Uh, I think next category is mine, so best expansion. Basically, uh, it is uh, an expansion to an existing core game, which actually was basically which was which made the game uh, better just being there, which fixed stuff, which uh, uh, and ushered you into brave new worlds, uh, something like uh, which made the game exceptionally better. Or significantly different and uh, in a positive way basically um, I can begin since I demoted from best card game uh, both my recommendations here so uh, I have two and I'll start with the honorable mention because the honorable mention is uh, self and the several to win uh, but it didn't and it's fourth card cats and dogs expansion which is a great, great improvement of the game. Uh, Fort is already a great game. It's a game you will play 20, 30, 40 times before you can say, okay, it brings entirely new game modes, entirely new strategies, and uh, actually makes you think differently every time and depending on the draft. So uh, we published uh, a review, it's uh, open and uh, not exclusive uh, currently. Today, Fort Cats and Dogs, it's a great expansion for a great game. So that's my honorable mention, because my winner for the best expansion for this year is definitely Res Arcana Perle Imperi expansion. And that's why uh, uh, 
basically uh, it's Tom Lehman's ma magnum opus just because he made Race for the Galaxy, which is another excellent game. But Race Arcana is a great game. It, uh, it had the first uh, expansion in Lux at Tenebrae, which is currently available on Board Game Arena, so you can available on Board Game Arena, so you can see how good it is and actually the few problems it has. Uh, the great thing about Perle Imperi is uh, that it rebalances basically everything. It pushes, uh, it creates a new a new essence which uh, basically everything it pushes uh, it creates a new a new essence which uh, makes uh, victory points it uh, pushes the victory point uh, winning threshold to 13 points it makes a lot of balance changes but mostly it makes 13 points it makes a lot of balance changes but mostly it makes playable the only really unplayable card in the base game which was the wind up man <laughs> and uh, with perla imperi you have a reason to play that card it's not just automatically not just automatically discard it's not just a lost card when you draft it it uh, opened up a strategy which was existing since day one and it was never used because it made it viable so that's basically what won Perle Imperi the, the first place a, a, a even greater it's uh, elegant, it's beautiful, it fits everything in the original box so my best expansion I, I knew you were going to talk about Race Arcana. Yeah. Alexis, do you have an expansion that you want to talk us about? Yes, there's an expansion that uh, I, I I didn't play that many expansion in the past uh, in the past year or so, but there's one that I thought was extremely fun, extremely nice, and I'm really happy that nobody nominated it before because I wanted to talk about it a little. The little miniatures and tokens are all extremely well made and it all just feels so nice to have and the expansion is just expanding on that it's just even more beautiful little content and it fits extremely well with the base game it adds a lot of um uh of different it adds a lot of um uh of different variation into the the different seasons that you you go through with the game so yeah box nightfall has definitely uh floored me with how fun it was yeah, and also the creatures token are all different and keep being all different. Token are all different and keep being all different. Yeah, Nightfall did a great job of expanding on the game uh, in an interesting manner and giving you more of a reason to linger, um, which I think was something that almost lacked in the main game almost lacked in the main game you know though it, so it's this nice sort of addition of the the campsite type mechanic and that little cute little tent meeple that you have it's uh i i everything that that they do in parks i'm always like ooh, i can't wait to see nothing else to, ooh, i can't wait to see nothing else to look at it all so it's such gorgeous artwork really celebrating um the american like nature of the world it's a yeah it's a good good expansion good choice and it's also on board game arena right now uh, of course uh, this is one of right now uh, of course uh, this is one of the most meaningless uh, addition to board game arena because parks is so good to play in person <laughs> the tactile experience is really something which makes the game stand out yeah that's for sure yeah yeah i think i think we can all which makes the game stand out yeah that's for sure yeah yeah i think i think we can all agree like parks has parks has been a knockout hit this year um if it doesn't appear on any of our game of the year lists um it can just have an honorable mention on mine right here now for being that good and do you have any best ex who me yeah you okay yeah so i got a few honorable mentions I'd like to give one to Sushi Go Party because it takes Sushi Go and expands on it. It more or less just makes the original Sushi Go redundant, but 
having all those different choices and options and menus you could put to go on the podcast in the past somewhere. Hello, it's another country. Um, and I said that the game was great but lacking in content and the expansions would make or break things. Good news. The expansions give you a cooperative scenarios to play through. They give you really tough final enemies to fight, like some of the biggest machines from the game. Uh, fantastic. Um, also, Hostage Negotiator career for just tying everything together in Hostage Negotiator. Great. And personally, the network's telly time really like tickled me because there was a lot of British shows on there, um, which was fun to see. But my winner... I would be surprised if anyone could guess what this game is that it's an expansion for. If anyone wants to take a quick stab at it, include the audience, I'll give you an opportunity now. Oh. Uh, this is uh, completely Do you, do you, you like a clue? It's a yes. worker placement game. Okay, Maki. Uh -huh. It's a yes. worker placement game. Okay, Maki. Uh -huh. But it's not an inspection. No. No, it's no. the expansion. Cannot be Concordia, as you mentioned it already. Correct. Caverna as expanding on Agricola. <laughs> Caverna is correct. <laughs> uh, I like the dwarves in it. No, uh, I, I won't carry on. <laughs> Caverna is correct. <laughs> uh, I like the dwarves in it. No, uh, I, I won't carry on stringing it out for any longer. It's Tome Saga, which is the expansion for the oh. West Kingdom trilogy, which I don't believe I've ever spoken at all about on the on this podcast uh but i've been playing on and off quietly in the background uh but i've been playing on and off quietly in the background so the west kingdom trilogy is part of a it's three games as part of a series which uh garfield games are doing they're a new zealand game company um and they're doing they've done raiders of the north sea as a trilogy they've done the west kingdom and they just finished kingdom and they just finished that they're doing south tigris next what Tome Saga does is it takes Architects of the West Kingdom, Paladins of the West Kingdom, and Vice Counts of the West Kingdom, gives them a cooperative mode, and also gives them a campaign where you can sit down and compete with other players across all three games, across all three games trying to collect tomes. So suddenly they tie all of these three separate games with similar mechanics in the same setting together in a really tiny box. It's incredibly small. Uh, and some of the content you get is actually just like expansion upgrades for each of the three different games. So they did an incredible, so they did an incredible job, and it's really good. Like the, I will say, like West Kingdom is not a light game. It's very heavy and challenging as far as um, as far as worker placement games go. But Tome Saga just gives you so much more life, and the fact that you can enjoy the game as a cooperative game, cooperative game. They've been good solo games anyway, but now having like cooperative is great. Uh, having uh, the whole like arc across all three um, games is also just wonderful. So I haven't seen in a long time an expansion that's tried to do so much with such little, such little physical in the way of components. It's intelligently designed. And this is everything you want if you want to make a campaign game for your series. I would be surprised to learn they thought about this while they were designing the three games in advance. It's brilliant. That's Tome Saga for the West Kingdom trilogy. And that's great. And that's great. Yeah. yeah. We are left with one category. Ooh, we are. We're left I, with a big one. Uh, Alexis, do you want to take care of that category? Again. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, no problem, especially since this one is going to be a, a very easy pick on my end. Uh, so we are doing, uh, talking just about beautiful boards, good looking boards, uh, boards that are extremely well uh, laid out or that works very well for the game that they're uh, about. Uh, and I was thinking about nominating, uh, well, isn't first of it, all... Isn't it best board game? Yeah, that, that's best board and then best board game. <laughs> Oh, uh, I, we are doing best board, right? No, it, it, board it, it was written board as a short, but it's best board game because board best board was in aesthetics. Oh, yeah. oh, <laughs> this is a surprise. This is a surprise. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> what, what, what was your winner for best? I, I was going to I was going to mention uh, Midera's board because I think that uh, while I'm not the biggest fan of the the game itself, I think it's it's fun, but uh, it has it has some short, some shortcoming. I think that the way that it plays with the the boards and the different 
uh, where that it expands it with the, um, uh, the diagram manual, the way that it functions in, in uh, overall. I think that it's very fun. And I think that uh, Midera at the very least on the, the bold side of it uh, wins, but that would not be my uh, bold game of the year nomination. Okay, <laughs> no, no, let's, create the, the, let's create the category best board. I have Maki because it is not a table log. It, it, I wanted to talk about Maki. I would say well, my best Mark board for the uh, nomination. Yes, sorry. <laughs> my best board for VR is one deck dungeon because there is no board. Oh, ah! good <laughs> Zing. How oh, that we quickly uh, dispatched uh, the best so, board category. <laughs> no, we, we do the, the real best board game category. <laughs> Um, and so which board game really impressed us this year and really uh, stayed as the, the most fun and the most uh, interesting one? Uh, on my end, uh, it have to be uh, Micro Macro City. Um, I think that it, even though it's, uh, it's a, it will need to be expanded on, I think. Uh, I think that by itself, it's a bit, uh, it's a bit short. Uh, but I think that as a concept, as a way that it's presented, uh, how it, how it just plays and it's fun for whoever gets into it. I think that uh, Micro Macro City is just uh, one of the runner up this year, uh, at the very least in my end. Uh, what about you, Alessio? What's your favorite board game this year? Okay, uh, this is uh, easy and complex at the same time. At the same time, because I have at least three games, and uh, there are there was one uh, which I could. Uh, basically put as a best board game this year but i didn't receive it yet so cannot honestly say that is it's my best for me so i have to say uh, one is sleeping gods and uh, that's it because all things uh, i have to say we received that uh, very early in the year uh, it's uh, it, it was a hit uh, right immediately basically and uh, that there is one start playing you say okay it's cool but really nothing not a lot uh, different from uh, oh what you what, what i can say near and far uh, then you begin playing you and uh, you, you you begin uh, rotating the event deck the, f the first time and then stuff happens then everything con and the, the the great thing about that uh, is that uh, it's a world so big to explore that uh, in a single game game through in a single playthrough i basically went uh, west and north and came up with a uh, with an ending which i decided based on what i knew uh, i came up with a completely different story which made me question what i did in the first uh, playthrough too so this is a game which is complete. This is it's an evolution of a very well known mechanics from Ryan Lockett. It, it is uh, beautiful. It has a lot of gameplay it's from Ryan Lockett. It, it is uh, beautiful. It has a lot of gameplay. It, it scales perfectly both solo and with a lot of players. You can be happy to play it solo and you can be happy to play it with four people because that that's what makes decision and discussion compelling. That, that's it with four people because that that's what makes decision and discussion compelling. That, that's how you can decide every piece of or part of the story. Uh, this is game of the year material and that's my game of the year. Yeah, Ryan really put together a very competent, well-crafted and yeah, Ryan really put together a very competent, well-crafted and believable world. His storytelling has the thing that's improved the most. Um Sleeping Gods is just an honorable mention for me. Um and I'll get into that when I start talking about my list, but it's my list, but it's just it, the, the, if it was going to be best world, it would be Sleeping Gods easily. Um, just the depth of uh, of exploration and the clever ways that everything links together. Nobody's properly tackled an, a sandbox board game before. Sandbox board game before now, and Sleeping Gods really does feel like a sandbox board game. You're very yeah. much, hey, here you go, off you go, have an experience. If it didn't turn out too great, well, 
and try again next time. Uh, reiterate and carry on. Uh, and there's lots of mysteries and carry on. Uh, and there's lots of mysteries and little things and the nice way with the keyword mechanics. So you do some stuff and then you get a keyword and you have to carry that round and then you'll arrive in a place and you'll draw the car, you know, flick to the book and you look at that car with the keyword and you go, oh, we've had an impact here because we've got this, we've got this word now. And sometimes that impact is not great, like when I accidentally encouraged a demon to enslave an entire city without realizing it. I spent a bit of time cleaning that mess up. Yeah, it's it is it is masterful. It's so cozy as well. It's a really like really like cozy and quiet feeling place. But not not that it isn't dangerous. It's just I feel well, Sleeping Gods. The very title kind of gives you that that idea, that feeling of this not quite calm, but calm with stuff underneath. With stuff underneath, you know. Very good game. Uh, Audrey, then, uh, what's your game of the year? Yeah, for me, Micro Macro, he has an honorable mention, but he's not my game of the year, because my game of the year is Midzara so far. Uh, I haven't gone to the full uh, gameplay, uh, well, or to the full history, more, more, more that. Uh, but uh, I really like the, the way it plays and the way you think about the mechanics and the different powers, even though I discovered that we messed up a rule for uh, paying XP to gain powers, but we will fix that another time. Really, uh, even though I don't really care about the story, uh, I really, really like the, the gameplay. And maybe it's because I haven't played that many uh, dungeon crawlers or dungeon bashers uh, or dungeon explorers before uh, but uh, I really think that the weapons mechanics are really great and that uh, makes it the best of the year for me so back at you Fen well no I think we should chat a little bit about Midara first oh. I, I, I love you guys <laughs> it, it has appeared on um, you know it, it, Alexis talked about the board design in, in Alexis's special category about the board design in, in Alexis's special category board of the year uh, I've, <laughs> I've, played, I've played Madara as well um, I've even got some of their resin miniatures sitting on my painting desk and they are they're really good the resin miniatures are mm, I, I love the style I think they they're fantastic um, especially they love the style I think they they're fantastic um, especially They've chosen a bunch of different materials for oh, yeah. parts, I love that. which is very clever. Like um, Rook, for example, he he comes with pistols, and they couldn't get the pistols to craft correctly in resin, so they switched them to correctly in resin. So they switched them to pewter. So he has metal pistols um, for material purposes. The same with Zeke, he has a bandana and he has twin ribbons streaming off the back of it. They chose not to put those in resin because they're very thin and they would just snap, whereas the metal will take quite a few knocks and bends to become structurally weak enough that it breaks. So everything that, that Succubus Publishing are, are trying to do evidences a very deep level of passion um, and care about their world and their product and They've definitely played a lot of Descent and gone, hey, this is the stuff we like, these characters, and see where it goes. It's a uh, it's very audacious product, um, and very worthy of uh, Game of the Year. How about you, Alexis? You've played it a bit, haven't you? Um, yeah, I've played it. I, I've i really enjoyed what I've, what I've played so far. It reminds me a lot of the old uh, D&D board game inspired by HeroQuest. Um... I like that aspect of it. I think that to me it is maybe a little bit um, maybe a little bit too much confusion there in the rules. I feel like the game could be a little bit tighter uh, and I feel that the, the story is kind of uh, kind of dragging on. Uh, there's a lot of a um, lot of very long winded narrative bits that I don't feel are that um, interesting so far i feel that we kind of dropped into the game without a uh, lot of um of instruction and then we just told a very long-winded story about characters that so far at least uh, i haven't really um gotten really uh into 
Uh, but other than that, I think that the game is very strong. Uh, I think it's very fun to, to play and it's very fun to create different combos and to try to make try to make characters that just uh, function and that are tactical together. Uh, I, I like that aspect of the game and uh, yeah, so far I've had a, a pretty pretty good experience, uh, just not, not game of the year for me. Yeah, the um, is it, you, you hit on a good point. The way that the game doesn't really use classes as such, instead kind of has you abilities with some limitations and rules on how you can get those cards is super interesting. Uh, and I also like that they discovered in first edition people were saying, well, you play these three classes, these three specific builds because they do everything, and then the fourth person just makes up weight, um, and there wasn't any other choices. So they looked at things and broaden people's choices and make sure there's no like solved answers that are easy to find, which super cool way of approaching things, you know, and they did it quickly. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I really like uh, in RPGs in general freeform systems. Uh, like even though I mostly play uh, D and D, uh, I like uh, Legend of the Five Rings, for instance. It's from your school. Everything else is freeform or Vampire, which well, Vampire and World of Darkness, where most things are freeform. And I really enjoyed uh, finding that uh, in uh, a board game, uh, in a narrative board game. Yeah, it's definitely nice to make your character skills match the this is what you get this is what you get when you level up yes yeah, and personal expression definitely uh, uh, of course it, it has to at least be mentioned that this being uh, 2021 it is probably the only other point on human history uh, other than uh, 1989 where you 1989 where you can say that hero quest is your game of the year so <laughs> <laughs> no, no, you can't. You can't. For most people, it's 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 going to be a twenty twenty two game. Yeah, not not yet received anyway. Yeah. So let let's let us let us let us slip and it to the next y- year. Y- yeah, exactly. And I was going to say, if for, I, received anyway. Yeah. So let let's let let's slip and it to the next y- year. Y- yeah, exactly. And I was going to say, if for, I consider most people are going to get here request within like either now or all the way to like December time. If you're going to be calling it your game of the year, I'd be asking, how much have you played it? If you come back with like 50, 60 hours, then I'd be like, fair enough. But I'd be asking, how much have you played it? If you come back with like 50, 60 hours, then I'd be like, fair enough. But uh, The best thing yeah. about Hero Quest is that it's not game yeah. of the year for any of us. <laughs> not yet. <laughs> and it won't ever be for me. <laughs> yes. Because I'm not getting it. So. I suspect it's going to be really enjoyable for me. <laughs> yes. Because I'm not getting it. So. I suspect it's going to be really enjoyable for people who remember playing the original and it's going to feel a bit dated and clunky for anyone who's grown up on modern dungeon crawls. Yeah, it looks like it's uh, basically a verbatim adaptation of the uh, of the community like it's uh, basically a verbatim adaptation of the uh, of the community version of uh, HeroQuest updated rules. It has something of the European version, something of the US version. For example, you have equipment cards like in a European version. Uh, we'll see. Yeah. Equipment cards like in a European version. Uh, we'll see. Yeah. So well, are we talking about it or are we not? <laughs> no, we, we, no, we, no, no. Not yet. We we might talk about it next year because I have a copy coming as well because I used to play it at my grandparents. So I have some fond memories. Although even at the time I used to play it at my grandparents. So I have some fond memories. Although even at the time I played it, I was like, this is a bit like, this is a bit Monopoly at times. Um, so... Uh, anyway, I, I think it's time I, I gave my board games of the year and then we're going to chat a little bit uh, in just general terms for a short I want to give to Sleeping Gods we've talked about it, Descent Legends of the Dark we've talked about it, Food Mangate not talked about it I think we're going to talk about it on the podcast at some point Wild Ascent I wrote about it, it's really good if you're graduating from Dungeon Crawlers and you want to experience the cab game Wild Ascent is like it never seems to happen and underwater cities, especially with the expansion, came together really well. But my game of the year, um, and I'm not going to force you all to guess, but you might have figured it out this time. It's Vagrant Song from Weird Miniatures. Oh, yes. I would have bet on it. Yeah, <laughs> it's a difficult thread because you're you're talking about the hose pipe arm structure, which is uh, historically not a particularly, um, shall we say. 
uh, inclusive art style, uh, but they've made a game that is warm, welcoming, inclusive, innovative. It is a cab game, boss battler. In a new way, the bindle mechanic is incredible. Just so refreshing. Um, I am, I, I, I love the game. And I really hope that they, they do some more in this series. Maybe a different kind of, well, hopefully a different kind of setting, different kind, different kind of place, uh, rather than the haunted train, something else. But yeah, it's it's competent. It's it's so came out of almost nowhere really. Like they just had it bubbling along in the background and then pushed it up, and it's just fully formed, and so deftly saying this is what a fully formed, and so deftly saying. This is what a boss battling experience can be for the average board gamer. Accessible, well priced. I think it's going out for less than seventy dollars, seventy euros, something like that. When it when it gets to main retail, it um, should be eighty five dollars. But uh, but uh, pre order aren't still fulfilled, so it's uh, um, it's not yet clear now. Hang on, I've got she got this answer because I saw this this morning. Um, my local retailer is the equivalent of 69 euros, which, as we all know, is a nice price. Yeah. Love it. Pieces. Really can't recommend it enough. Um, I, I actually do wish they had 3D miniatures so I could paint them because they're so characterful. But uh, that's it. So I think all that's left really is to just talk a little bit about the, the year in retrospect from Lazy Squire Games. Really good loved everything they've done they seem very competent they have one game in development at the time and then when they're close to releasing that one they do another one uh, so i fully backed their new wild ascent based on how good the old wild ascent was townsfolk tussle have been superb uh we couldn't like close this out without saying so is core request which has been fantastic yeah uh there's also a pretty good chance that core quest is going to be the best game of 2021 (laughs) right before uh the new year it it could do it it could sneak its way and it's uh it's certainly been one of the best kickstarters i've enjoyed it could sneak its way and it's uh it's certainly been one of the best kickstarters i've enjoyed being a part of um horizon zero dawn steamforged games they're not perfect uh, but they got everything out within the schedule they said they would and I'm very happy with the 12 boxes that I can't manage to fit anywhere for Horizon Zero Dawn, they would and I'm very happy with the 12 boxes that I can't manage to fit anywhere for Horizon Zero Dawn They are improving um, First world problems Yes, exactly, exactly uh, I, I, They're in my gaming attic and they have a whole storage cupboard to themselves That's a first world problem uh, Isle of Cats I love the the re I love the the re like the continuation. They've done the same thing that Leader Games have done. They've been like out there. They've been doing streams and talking about what they're doing. Uh, Isle of Cats is wonderful as well. So for me, those were the kickstarters. I was like, these have been great. And I I wonderful. would I would like to add to the list. Uh, Root extremely professional when handling this. Uh, these campaigns and uh, they did uh, uh, a classy thing like uh, subsidizing uh, shipping with profits uh, for the contra- to, to account for the container crisis so they deserve a shout out for this for this yeah yeah so uh, how about you on my end uh... There's a couple of Kickstarter that I'd like to mention. Obviously, uh, Car Quest, but uh, <laughs> I think that everybody knows that this one is going to be a banger. Uh, I I think that uh, the Seven Citadel uh, is shaping up to be to be pretty good. Uh, it it hasn't been outstanding like Car Quest has been, but I think that they've been uh, you know regularly updating, uh, showing off that they are doing something that's uh, expanding on uh, Seventh Continent. Uh, it seems like the, they've learned from from what they did in the in the previous one. I'm pretty excited about that one. Um, I will also uh, be remiss to um, fail to mention uh, Mark Bork Cult Heretic, which is a, a zine uh, that's sending off a little a few little modules uh, that have been compacted into into one book. It looks really fun. It was supposed to uh, last month, but they had some problems with. Um, uh, covid and and shipping and all of that but uh 
outside of the, the slight uh, shipping troubles, they've been also really good at updating, at keeping people uh, informed, at showing up that they're doing something great. Uh, I think it's, it's they're, 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 they're doing some, uh, some good stuff. Oh, uh, I just remembered another great ca Kickstarter campaign I want to mention, so later. So mention it. Okay, that's Aeon Trespass Odyssey. Uh, they are late. Ah, that was last year. Yeah, uh, the, the, well, it's still ongoing because they are extremely late, basically. Uh, perhaps uh, extremely is a bit too harsh a word, you know, in a, in a world we, where Kingdom Death exists. So <laughs> they are late, but they are doing... Uh, uh, big updates they are keeping everyone up to date with small updates when you need them and uh, you don't feel lost at any time so this is another campaign which uh, besides misfortune and uh, some uh, some rough tract of the road they managed to stay on track and that's uh, that's cool that's a great experience I, I wanted to mention uh, one inf actor of the, the last year, uh, the person that has been the, uh, <laughs> the worst for the Kickstarter community and that has really, uh, for the board game community and has really uh, annoyed everybody and, and went into everybody's way. Uh, I'm obviously talking about the infamous boat, uh, the Evergreen. Yes. <laughs> shout out to the Evergreen. <laughs> yeah, shout out to the Evergreen for uh, fucking up a lot of people's plan uh, in the past uh, in the past year. Doesn't that feel like it was forever ago? I mean, oh, it feel I I was certain that it was two years ago, but yeah. no, it's it's been it's yeah. Been like si nine si months. Since the pandemic started, my perception of time, uh, and at some point uh, when I was trying to think about games uh, for 2021 to to talk about, I was like, wait. <laughs> Which games did I discover in 2021? I was I wasn't even sure. Wait, which year it is? <laughs> yeah, I mean, by by chance when I go to my yeah overall 2022 and 2021 are just a big blob of stuff for me. And yeah, the evergreen in that. Pfft. I yeah. can't even remember when it was. Yeah, yeah we uh, had the summer of board game scandals, one after another, non-stop. Yeah. <laughs> Golden, be Golden Bell. <laughs> oh yeah. No, we we a lot of people kicked out of the board gaming community and the social uh, and the society in general. So <laughs> that, that's a thing that happened. Uh, we are we already mentioned uh, Rock Pepper Scissors Deluxe, so another great Kickstarter experience. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, Scissors Deluxe, so another great Kickstarter experience. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, before I I pass it on to. Uh, to the other people to, to mention games that they're looking for. There's another one that I, I think needs to be mentioned. Uh, it's uh, Cyborg, which is the expansion, well, the, the spin out. Uh, it's uh, Cyborg, which is the expansion, well, the, the spin off of Morkborg into Cy cyberpunk uh, territory. Sci fi Morkborg. That one is going to be a banger too, because uh, Morkborg has been uh, also a great Kickstarter experience. Uh, two years ago, I want to say. And I think uh, also a great Kickstarter experience uh, two years ago, I want to say. And I think that the um, the Cyborg version is just going to be uh, topping that off. So uh, something to look forward to. Hi, Alexis from the future here. Uh, since the recording, the Kickstarter from Cy underscore Borg has started. Hi, Alexis from the future here. Uh, since the recording, the Kickstarter from Sai underscore Borg has started. They smashed through their early goals and they are showing a mastery over the cyberpunk setting. Uh, go have a look. We'll probably talk about it next episode anyway. Um, back to the normal episode. Thank you. Uh, Audrey, what, what? Back to the normal episode. Thank you. Uh, Audrey, what, what have you been uh, looking forward to next year? Well, I already mentioned the two, actually one which will be in 2021, it's a wonderful kingdom, uh, and uh, Eons and Legacy, which should be 2021 as well. Uh, but for now, for 2022, I think to see what Son Kokushin uh, ends up being. Uh, I'm not sure I will be able to afford getting in on the Kickstarter, honestly, but that's another problem. Uh, but yeah, I, I really want to see what they can bring, and it's it's all yeah in these big games to that world after Midara. Uh, 
uh, which is the second and so yeah there is Sanko Kushin uh, and there is another one uh, which I want to see but uh, that I'm not really interested in but I, c I can't remember which one it is Okay, uh, in the meantime, while well, you remember, is Kabuto Sumo. This is a great game. Uh, I accidentally discovered it because uh, I'm always on the search for Japanese titles. And, uh, and Kabuto Sumo is an excellent, excellent game. Uh, we'll probably talk about it uh, in, in some future episode because I want to talk about it. <laughs> I remember the game I wanted to mention. Uh, it's uh, from the same creators as Destinies. I think it's Malial uh, Land of Legends. Uh, it seems to be something quite big coming again with an app. Uh, but it seems to be something quite big coming again with an app, uh, but with more narrative than Destinies. So I'm really curious to see how it ends up because uh, yeah, my problem with Destinies was that the I didn't feel like I needed the game uh, once I had the app, uh, almost. I didn't feel like I needed the game uh, once I had the app, uh, almost. And uh, so I want to see how that companies adjust the app management. Oh, there's my father's work coming the next year. True, true. That should be interesting. Yeah. The game that the work coming the next year. True, true. That should be interesting. Yeah. The game that they couldn't possibly translate into a book because it had too many words. I think Oathsworn <laughs> might have a couple of things to say about that. Yeah, b as big as the Lord of the Rings right now. So yeah, well, I, I just mentioned Oathsworn's coming, Mike. Um, and the shelves will cry under the weight. Well, uh, we, we also have to remember uh, the best upcoming uh, expansion of uh, 2022. Uh, which is obviously going to be the gambler's chest, uh, you know. <laughs> <laughs> let's let's see. Let, let's say that we, uh, that's all we have time for. So um, yeah. thank you for listening to The Last Standee. You can catch us over at www.patreon.com forward slash The Last Standee or follow us as The Last Standee on Twitter or subscribe in your preferred podcast app. It's goodbye from Alexis. From Belgium. Au revoir. Alessio. Goodbye. Goodbye.